Hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you very much for all the comments and encouragement. And uh, I really enjoy getting up every morning, having a cup of coffee and checking my uh, YouTube channel and answering questions for folks. And um, I'm just going to get started here. It's been a long time. I don't know if we're going to get back into this like I was, but, you know, maybe with continued encouragement and uh, it'll work out. Today, I want to talk about this uh, engine build uh, briefly. This is not the aluminum block engine case that I had last year. This is uh, a new AS41 super case and I'm using my 82 millimeter crankshaft in it and it came with this oil pickup and some of you it's the the video is not up there right at the moment I could turn it back on but um, these can be very difficult to remove and even in this case it was very difficult to remove but I discovered a little trick on my own and maybe it'll help somebody else that hose clamp that's on there Boy, what a lifesaver. I was just, how can I grip this thing? I I tried uh, so many times over weeks and weeks and months, and I just, just got frustrated with all the problems that I've been having here. I'm just an average enthusiast. I have been doing this for many years. I have four cars. I'm trying to keep running. But in this case, what I did, I just thought I'd give it a try. I put that hose clamp on right down here and then you take a large flat bladed screwdriver and twist it and you won't hurt anything there's plenty of beef back there this is fully supported all the way down the the tube tube tunnel there and then I had to loosen the clamp again move it forward and take another bite tighten her down and twist it again and then I was able it came out relatively easy because there's very little uh, that's actually swedged on the end here and there was a couple places that uh, they wasn't making contact at all you can see the witness marks here uh, there's a big opening and it's the same thing on this side there's another space over here so you know it looks pretty round but uh, boy that sucker's in there and I don't know if they stick it in first and then swedge it and then put in the the plug here um, afterwards but I didn't want to mess with that and I didn't want to thread it and you shouldn't have to do this stuff and they suggest that you buy one of the larger pickup tubes <laughs> you know people that bought this also purchased that and it's not over the board expensive but um, yeah I thought I'd put that in there and I'm glad I did it and I I got it in there you'll have to remove the paint for sure and probably bevel the edge that you're po poking in there and you may want to put it in the freezer and shrink it and you may want to heat the case you'll have to experiment on what works for you and your engine and uh, I decided to go with this because <clears throat> I've always wanted to try this cow magnet trick that Gene Berg used to talk about and you can purchase these at most hardware stores or uh, animal supply stores. Uh, uh, and you just strap it on there with a hose clamp and it's just a nice snug fit. And it will pick up metal particles flowing through your engine case. Um, when I was using this other, my older block, which is perfectly reusable, I thought I was going to gain something. I knew I was going to gain something going in the aluminum engine case, but... I don't like dealing with people 1,500 miles away from me, you know? It's just too expensive and too time-consuming. And this one, you're, uh, you're, it's a swedge fit, so it can fit over that. There's, it it kind of creates a little bit of a step. And I was nervous about this just being clamped on there, and I was worried that the extra weight of the magnet and being clamped again down here might encourage it to fall off. So I never used the magnet and I think this is that way but as many of you know I'm always changing my mind and I take engines and put them in the different cars that I have and at some point I might want to put it in an off-road car and 
not have this extra oil sump hanging down underneath my engine for ground clearance reasons. So in the event I want to do that, I thought, <clears throat> boy, this is going to be really difficult to shorten the tube instead of just being able to take the clamp off. So I, uh, I dug around in my tools and I found this rigid number 104 copper tubing cutter and <clears throat> I did plumbing for a number of years so I just happened to have this and it's not meant to design meant to cut steel but I did cut a piece off and I was very slow very gently you may have to turn that thing 60 times you turn it until it gets easy and then you just snug it and you might want to go three or four or five turns and and, and make sure that if, it, if yours is an old one, take it apart and oil things up and make sure that things are rolling and you shouldn't have any problem and I cut it off and they come longer like this. You have to cut them in the event you're using a four quart oil sump versus this length for a one and a half quart sump and that's the scoop on that. If I was going to use this setup with a dry sump oil system, I would probably use this pickup tube, but I had one of these in my other car, uh, my other sand car that did have a dry sump oil system, and you're just, you're running no oil in your, there's nothing on your dipstick, there's no oil in your crankcase to speak of, there's always going to be a little bit, but it, it just, that makes a new low point, and you can see we're hitting the sand. <laughs> As you come down the dunes and stuff, it, it came off, but it never broke or distorted, and it, it works just fine. And uh, I had other engines, more than one engine, so I just happened to have that laying around. Um, the new pickup tube does not fill, fit with the old type screeners. This hole, the tubing, is smaller than the hole that goes in there. This is the original size, and it's it's a nice friction fit. You can see that, how that works. And so bear that in mind, you'll have to look and make sure, I think there are two different part numbers for these, um, so be sure and keep that in mind. Um, I was going to talk about this bigger oil pump and this relief cover, but I, I, I think I'm just going to keep this video short and focus mostly on that little trick of removing the pickup and then uh, getting yourself situated and then of course you want to blow and make sure that uh, do the same thing just put your thumb over that and easy on that one blow in there and no air comes out and I was gonna take it apart but no air blew out and the little uh, bolt and everything wind up everything just it worked after weeks and weeks of struggling I finally stumbled and I it's, it's like okay everybody's wanting to know what happened to me I'm still alive I'm still coughing and I'm still hopeful I seem to have lost my smile for the most part but hopefully with the views and support that I've been getting I'll I'll start getting it back and maybe the the nice weather too you know you get the get the wintertime blues and everything so hopefully this COVID stuff is going to be done and all this election bullshits behind us so uh, uh, I, I want to go back up the mountains and see how badly they got burned I've been to a, a few places and uh, the forest fires between the problems and uh, it was yeah there's no wonder I didn't lose my smile. So anyhow, um, thank everybody again. And I hope that little trick helps somebody out there. And uh, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up before you leave. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy, out.